right, number 31. The residual plots from two different sets of bivariate data are graphed below. So we got graph A and we got graph B. Explain using evidence from graph A and graph B which graph indicates that the model for the data is a good fit. I found this problem to be kind of kind of tough and a little hard to explain. So I'm going to show you the answers from the um, from the actual regions that get the best uh, points, that got the most points. So let's take a look here at well, first of all, before I show you that, graph A has points that are nicely interspersed or separated on either sides of the line, right? So, sorry. So if you had to say things like maybe the data in graph A is spaced evenly around the line of best fit, right, from here to here. And if you look at graph B, there seems to be a, you know there seems to be a pattern here where there's no pattern the data is is bound or is grouped on either side and group and graph B it looks like as your values get bigger they go up and then to a certain point they start going down again so there may be no real relationship um, usually you're hoping as the data goes up you know your your as one variable goes up the other one goes up or as one variable goes down the other one goes down Let's take a look at some of the answers that got the most points on the regions. Um, let me just erase that. So this person said, graph A is a good fit because it does not have a clear pattern, whereas graph B does. And you know what's funny? If you look right here, it says this person or this student has a complete and correct response. They got full credit. What did they say? Well, all they really said was, and, and it's not much, um, sorry all they said was graph a is a good fit because it does not have a clear pattern so apparently saying that this does not have a clear pattern lets you know it's a better model for a good fit um, number 31 here's one that has a complete and correct response okay so let's see graph a it has random points scattered above and below the line from 0 to 12 which we talked about. The points are interspersed or grouped kind of uh, evenly on both sides. It has random points scattered above and below the line. This person got complete and correct response. All right, let's look at someone who got a one. All right. Graph A, I say this because the x-axis is in the middle of all of the points. Now we're starting to get a little more vague. And it didn't compare. The one thing this one didn't do, it didn't compare the two graphs. All right, and let's look at someone who got, this one got a one. Graph B, because it has a curved shape, indicating it is a good fit. That's not necessarily true. And who got zero? Graph B, because the dots are tighter together. So there's your zero response, right? Score of a zero. Um, tough one to explain. But if we look at the reasons or the ones that got the most points, graph A is good fit because it does not have a clear pattern. So it looks like the points are evenly distributed along, um, along the line here. And there seems to be a pattern here. I don't know what else to tell you guys. It's a weird one. I'd love for you guys to explain to me why you think this one, uh, your explanation for number 31. That would help me out. Thanks. Number 32, a landscaper is creating a rectangular flower bed such that the width is half of the length. The area of the flower bed is 34 square feet. Write and solve an equation that determines the width of the flower bed, or to determine the width of the flower bed, to the nearest tenth of a foot. All right, so here's how you're going to do this, guys. You are going to first draw a picture. Drawing a picture always helps, so let's do that. Okay. Um, we have the length here, which is the longer side, and they tell us the width is half of the length. So that means the short side is going to be one half L, one half the length. So when I get my area of a rectangle, which is just length times width, L times one half L, it's going to be 34 square feet. 34 feet squared. So L times L, if, it, if it's weirder to you, just picture X times one half X. What does that give you? Hopefully you said one half X squared, right? Same basis, add the exponents. So this is going to be one half L squared equals 34 feet squared. 
Uh, I'll ignore the units for a second, but um, I want to get rid of that half, so I multiply by the reciprocal. <clears throat> that crosses out. And I get L squared equals 68. So how do I do this? How do I get rid of that squared? Take the square root. L equals radical 68. Now the only thing is, they don't want radical 68 like that. They want um, they want an answer in a tenth of a foot, the nearest tenth of a foot. So the length is radical 68. So let's do that. Radical 68, 8.2462. So length is 8. 8.2462. But they actually don't want the length. They want the width. Right, so the width is going to be half of that. Um, so it gets a little tr well, not tricky. You just got to pay attention. So if that's the length. The width is going to be half of that. Right, one half eight. Ooh, ooh, sorry about that. Eight point two four six two. So I'm just going to take half of that times point five. They give me four point one two three. Four point one two three one. And I gotta round it right to the nearest tenth of a foot. All right, so four point uh, that's four point one two, so it's four point one feet. That's your answer there. And you could write a little quick sentence there. I'm not gonna write it because I think I'm running out of space. But you could write um, the length, of the the width of the flower bed is four point one feet, uh, rounded to the nearest tenth. There you go. All right, guys, that's all you gotta do. Good luck.